and welcome to the Fleet Geeks podcast. We're here to help develop fleet and transport professionals. Do you want to progress and develop your skills and knowledge? We promise to bring lively conversation and debate around interesting issues and keep you bang up to date with changes in our awesome industry. The Fleet Geeks are a community of professionals and if you enjoy the podcast, why not join the discussion for free in the Fleet Geek community over on Facebook. Hello and welcome to today's episode of Fleet Geeks podcast. I wanted to share with you some information that I did recently for the Cold Chain Federation, flagship uh, members of the Cold Chain Federation. And as part of that, I did a webinar recently around accreditations for fleet operators. I thought it'd be quite useful if I gave you Fleet Geeks podcast listeners a insight into some of the things I talked about, because I get asked this stuff all the time. So if you're watching on YouTube, there is a presentation as well. Uh, but if you're listening on the podcast, I'll just talk you through some of the points that I made to the Cold Chain Federation. Now, not all Cold Chain will have been interested in talking about this fleet stuff, um, but we had quite a few people sign in and listen to the listen to the w- webinar. So um, it was pretty good. Now, the four key transport related accreditations that I'm aware of are the FORS scheme, uh, Fleet Operator Recognition Scheme is one. DVSAN recognition is another. Uh, Mission Zero is the third. And of course, ISO 39001 is another option. Excuse me. So, as you know, I did a, uh, we did a series of Mission Zero type um, podcasts more recently. And um, they came through. We had the chaps on from Mission Zero. So, I will just have a run through each of these four accreditations to help you understand which one is the best potentially for you or your clients so let's start off let me work out how to there we go that's how i changed the slide so let's start off with fours so fours is the most common fleet operator recognition scheme it's the most common scheme uh most common type of accreditation that's out there um it's a voluntary scheme And there is something like, bear with me one moment, and I'll tell you, I think it's quite a huge amount. So uh, number of falls operators, I did prepare this for the previous thing. Yes, there's nearly 5,000 falls accredited operators out there with nearly 100,000 vehicles. So it's unusual that I do live live Googling during my sessions, but nonetheless, I thought it was an interesting statistic for people to look at. This is by far and away the most common standard. Now, first of all, the things to know then. So what's the cost is the first thing. So as part of this session, I uh, I shared the costs involved. So um, the scheme includes a subscription fee, uh, which is annual. And the annual subscription fee depends on the size of your fleet. So up to 10 vehicles is 400 pounds annually. Uh, 11 to 25, 750, 26 to 50 is 950, and it's 1750 up to 100, and then over 100, 2350 is your annual fee. And additional to that, you've got an annual cost of audit. Um, so annually, you'll then be audited depending on your level. So there's a bronze, silver, gold tiered approach to force. Uh, so the tiered membership means that people have to go for bronze first. And then they can add silver and gold as a bolt on into the future. The benefit of going for silver or gold means that that bronze audit is no longer annual. It means that you can do it every two years instead. But the silver part of the renewal or the gold part will continue to be annual. And there's some cost involved for those. So a bronze audit is 450 quid. um, And the gold and silver is 235 each. And that, strictly speaking, is the four standard, really. Um, I think if people implement it effectively, the challenge with fours is that it's quite um, strict on the criteria for the policies and the different uh, the different areas. And what that means is, is that many operators will just buy a pack and they don't properly implement those policies. And that's one of the natures, one of the challenges of fours, really, is that... Um, if you do it properly and you follow the process and you implement everything and you can demonstrate implementation and evidence the process it's a really really good scheme it is potentially a really really good scheme and i think there's steps being taken to improve that 
However, um, I think for many, it's been something that's been paid lip service. So because it's like a procurement standard, and what that means is, is that many people who, um, you know, many companies who want to demonstrate uh, that they, you know, have checked out that companies are good before they offer transport to them, uh, they ask for fours because it's kind of the, the easy bet. And uh, what then ends up happening is that people, uh, people just pay it lip service and don't really follow the process. So my recommendation is if you're going to do it, embed it, do the, follow the process and do it if it's going to benefit you by being able to get more customers. That's my, that's my key feedback on that. Uh, the other thing with force to think about just before I move on to ad recognition is there are also some specialist courses that um, the ad recognition, uh, the force requires. So you just need to pay attention to the costs on those. So things like safe urban driving and those kinds of things. Hello, it's Sharni from Flagship Partners. We are really proud to sponsor the Fleet Geeks podcast. If you need expert advice or training for your fleet business, make Flagship Partners your first choice. We are really excited to announce the launch of our Transport Manager Academy with expert development for fleet leaders. We offer fully accredited initial Transport Manager CPC training, CPC refresher and operator license awareness training, as well as mentoring, support and professional development beyond the qualification. Our vision is to develop elite fleet professionals. Anyway, let's move on to let's move on to the earned recognition standard. So, if fours is the most common, earned recognition I class as the highest standard. Okay, so it's less common than fours, far less common. Um, I don't know the exact number of vehicles operated under fours, but there's 131 operators. So. It's very much, if you're looking at 4,700 for fours, there's only 131 operators currently in the UK with earned recognition. So there's still some scope to go. However, what I would also add is that of those 131 operators, they are operating a high proportion of the vehicles in the UK because it's something that certainly the big organisations have gone for. And I know that earned recognition have been targeting councils and those kinds of places too. So... Earned recognition is really, really robust. It's a really robust standard. Um, if you look at it, uh, the, there's information freely available online. And the beauty of uh, the earned recognition standard is there's no membership fees, but there's lots and lots of benefits of being a member. So similar to Fords, you get to put stickers on your vehicles, um, but earned recognition really is seen as the pinnacle. Um, to meet this standard, you need to really be an exemplary vehicle operator. So you are really walking or driving the thought, I suppose, is the right answer. So how the process works from an audit perspective is that you arrange an audit through one of the earned recognition accredited uh, audit providers, which flagship partners are one, by the way. So um, please do get in touch if you're interested in going for this standard. In the same way, if you're interested in going for any of these standards, please do get in touch because we will help get you there, whether that's FALLS or the ISO standards or, or with earned recognition as well. Um, please do get in touch. We'd love to help you. Um, and recognition is, people's challenge with it is that because you share data uh, with the DVSA, they worry that the DVSA might interfere in your business. But in my experience, that really isn't the case. Um, the end recognition team are there to help support their operators. They are there to promote the end recognition scheme and make it as simple and straightforward as possible. So I am a big advocate for this scheme. And I think that the benefit of it is, is that earned recognition operators mean the more of them there are means that the enforcement officers can spend more time with the serious and serially non-compliant, which I think is a really important thing for all of us from a road safety perspective. So earned recognition, there's no tiered membership. There are some modules uh, if you choose to have them. So you might be able to go for the HS2 module if you chose to go for that, for example, because you wanted to bid for contracts. But overall, earned recognition is a very, very high standard. There's lots of benefits. Um, it prevents you from being pulled over in the future. Um, and uh, there, there are still other benefits to be announced, um, but it is a very good scheme and it's only in order every two years. So I think overall, it's the most cost-effective option as well, which I think is, is very good too. So without sounding too, uh, too favorable to earn recognition, I'm gonna move on. There's Mission Zero, which for me, Mission Zero is like the challenger standard, okay? So it's that standard that's the new kid on the block, okay? 
and it's similar to Forza in many ways, but it's got you know it's got its own set of expectations. And the beauty of this one, if you're a small operator, it's a free annual subscription, which is really great. Actually, I think this is very good for small operators based on the information I've had. The other thing I say is there's loads of free workshops and free templates and resources. So it's really, really accessible. So I've done a really nice job at that. So I am, uh, I am quite impressed. There is, um, there is a cost of audit and the costs have been run through. It's a sliding scale depending on the size of the organization, but largely speaking, it looks fairly similar to Forbes from a cost perspective. There's a cost of subscription and then there's an annual cost of audit as well. Um, there's less requirement around training. So uh, overall, uh, the, the expectation is from a perk of membership perspective is it will be less cost than Forbes. Um, and there's more support around the, the templates and the resources that are available. So have a look at it. If you're, if you're considering fours and actually the people that are requesting you for fours would accept mission zero, why not give it a try and have a little look? So the final of the four standards I wanted to speak about was the ISO 39001. So I think this is a really interesting standard, particularly for those of you that operate already with ISO standards. 9001 is quality management, 14001 is environmental, and 45001 is health and safety. ISO 39001 is uh, the Road Traffic Safety Management Systems, RTSMS, which is a mouthful, isn't it? Now, there's little information about the cost of membership online. And it's something that I'd speak to BSI about because there'll be a cost of membership and there'll be a cost of audit. However, the audit is likely to be every three years with just an annual surveillance audit. And if you've already got ISO systems in place, this might be a really good option for you. Um, it's, uh, it's certainly good for, from a van perspective if you've got a van fleet. Um, because it targets that overall road traffic safety management scheme, which the others, which the others don't really um, cover in the same way. So ISO is obviously internationally recognized standardization, which is beneficial. So also if you do international work, this could be a good option for you. Um, I think there's a high initial cost potentially involved in, in getting involved with a, from a consultancy basis. But nonetheless, I think that it is... Um, yeah, particularly a very, very, uh, very viable, very viable option for many people. So have have a look at that, and it's something that we've been helping a few, a few clients with. Um, and then there's the uh, the about flagship slide there uh, for the end of that. But I hope this has been interesting for you having a look at those different accreditations. I can't answer which is the best standard for you. Um, certainly, they they've all got their own things. So, for example, fours is the most common, and recognition is the highest standard. Mission Zero is the challenger, and certainly ISO is best for vans. So that's kind of my summary of the different standards. And if you are interested and would like more of a conversation, please do get in touch. It'd be lovely to have a chat. Thank you very much for listening, and I shall see you on a future episode. Thank you very much. Bye. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please share with your friends and colleagues too. Join us for free on Facebook with the Fleet Geeks community for transport and fleet managers. Fleet Geeks offers ongoing professional development, networking and mentoring too. So get in touch with me, Pete Rushmer, on any social media platform to find out more.